Because Hitakarana is uh, it stand for three, meaning three. Hita meaning prosperity, happiness, and then Karana is the path or the, the steps. So then it's three steps for prosperity and happiness. Ada tri hita karana, ada tri mandala. Ada di tri hita karana untuk kehidupan orang Bali. Satu ada parhiangan. Parhiang itu seperti pura, seperti pura-pura uh, di rumah. Ini ada pelemahan, pelemahan itu untuk kehidupan manusia. Any Balinese will 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 understand. Trihitakarana, and it's uh, used in, in every activities, you know, architecture, uh, rice field, and any activities, you will you will use uh, that as a guide. Memang dari dulu sudah diwariskan hal seperti itu untuk memberikan suatu pendidikan kepada generasi muda atau anak-anak agar mencintai lingkungan. Karena pendahulu kita orang Bali itu sudah berpikir jauh ke depan. I guess it's based on best practices and all from all the mistake in the past and then they and they come up with this uh, uh, system this concept that are uh, suitable for tropical climate plus also uh, uh, earthquake uh, prone uh, island you know dari kita karena ada tri manala tiga di rumah ada seperti manusia ada kepala ya ada badan ada kaki seperti di sini di keluarga ini kepala itu adalah bapak uh, mini tempal ya kepala oh kepala pemilik tempal merajaan atau sangah merajaan ini arang untuk rumah ini badan body ya. dan kemudian di luar itu untuk kaki One, two, three, that the meaning, the Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. We believe about karma. So everybody who are doing the offering, they are believe or whatever they are getting, they just, just say, thank you, God, you give me rice, you give me money, you give me food. Whoever they are, rich or poor, that's just must. The Balinese believe in two worlds, which is the Niskala and Sakala. So the Sakala is the reality, and the Niskala is the uh, unseen world. Uh, a lot of the things that we cannot explain, for example, like the eruption or the earthquake, Balinese look at it as a message from uh, Niskala, it's a message from unseen world. Contohnya, kalau saya ingat dulu pada waktu tahun 1963, Gunung Agung meletus sangat dahsyat sekarang. Kalau kita berpikir dengan adanya begitu, seolah-olah 
Tuhan sudah tahu untuk kehidupan orang Bali masa depan. Setelah itu ada letusan Gunung Agung, tanah Bali menjadi subur. Karena subur penghasilan padi, beras, tanaman-tanaman yang subur akhirnya banyak penghasilan. Yang kedua, beliau memuntahkan seperti batu, pasir, kerikil dan sampai sekarang belum habis itu. Untuk apa itu? Tiada lain untuk pembangunan di zaman modern, modern sekarang. Untuk membangun rumah, gedung itu diperlukan batu, pasir. Makanya itu banyak di dalam Bali untuk membangun itu. Itulah kehebatan daripada beliau Tuhan menciptakan gunung untuk manusia. Yeah, the reason for Balinese uh, doing the offering to say thank you for all this uh, abundant food and all this uh, fertile soils and uh, there are many different types of offering. I, I, I love the one that's for the rice because we, we go to the rice field for the offering uh, during the uh, seed collection. So we, we, that's called a uh, biukukung offering. It's like meaning that's like you're going to harvest soon. So it's like kind of exciting uh, moment. There's a shrine normally right uh, when your irrigation system, the subak irrigation system, when the water, the water enter your field, meaning that area is a, sac a sacred area, because they know that the best seed will be from there. So scientifically proved that because of that area where the water running there is uh, rich in oxygen. Like 95% of Ubud uh, people before tourism were, were rice farm. So I was like, I'm, I'm born right in the middle of it and every day of my life is going to the rice field. And I remember being so, like, so proud, you know, being born in the place. There's no way you can starve because ev everything is provided by nature. Since the introduction of the hybrid and then the chemical farming, it destroyed everything. It was I remember going out at night where I'm thinking the same like we're gonna get as much eel like uh, how, it, how it used to be. I realized that it was uh, all the eels were floating dead and frogs and uh, you name it everything that was survived before and now it's just floating dead. This was like you know like uh, big news go especially for people like me who who uh, who survived from it, you know, it was a big loss and it just, uh, it's so sad. In, in one village, uh, in six years, there's 103 farmers passed away. It's only uh, one suspect, it's the chemical. Not aware of how toxic they are and so therefore there's not much protection. And then farmers have a failure, lung failure, you know, and then they died and yeah, it was the, um, it's the, the, the beginning of the end. I, I remember that very well. I mean, uh, tot totally transformed the, the, the Balinese uh, life. Yang, ini adalah daerah Jatilue. Jatilue nama sebuah desa yang spesial menanam beras merah. Karena di sini selain beras merah tidak bisa ditanam karena tanah di sini spesial untuk beras merah. Dan di sini semuanya organik, tidak menggunakan chemical, tidak menggunakan pupuk dan tidak menggunakan obat pembasmi hama. Sehingga binatang-binatang yang menyebabkan kesuburan tanah dan juga hasil padi yang lebih bagus seperti misalnya ada cacing, ada belut, ada ikan kodok dan sebagainya masih bisa hidup bagus di sini. I don't understand. I've been here now all my life. 
but I don't understand this system. Farmers grow rice and then it gets sold straight away and then, and then farmers have to go and buy rice from the shop. But the problem is like uh, now farmers are stuck in this loop. They cannot get out until, the, until you come with a, a good solution, you know, there's a sustainable way out. I have like a strong interest in it because uh, since all this chemical farming being introduced and people so a lot of the food now is just contaminated with all these chemicals and it just makes me wonder like you know how, how it will affect humans. Tapi yang akan menjadi masalah besar di kemudian hari, karena dewasa ini saat ini yang bekerja, yang masih senang bekerja di pertanian itu adalah orang-orang yang umurnya sudah sedikit lanjut. Sangat khawatir sekali karena generasi muda itu tidak begitu menyukai pertanian, karena bekerjanya berat, kena hujan, panas juga, dan itu bekerjanya full time. Nah, sehingga anak-anak muda lebih cenderung dia bekerjanya di tempat yang enak, di kantor, di hotel, di restoran, atau pergi ke kapal pesiar. Nama saya Mira, pekerjaan orang tua saya sebagai security. Cita-cita saya menjadi perawat untuk mengembangkan ekosistem manusia di Indonesia. Walaupun petani sangat penting untuk mengembangkan beras di Indonesia, karena beras adalah makanan pokok penduduk Indonesia, tetapi saya tidak ingin menjadi petani karena pekerjaan sangat berat dan saya tidak memiliki lahan. Dan saya sebagai wanita tidak ingin menjadi petani karena pekerjaan sangat berat. Nama saya Bayu. Pekerjaan orang, tai, orang tua saya seorang pengusaha. Kalau besar nanti saya ingin menjadi dokter. Alasannya karena saya ingin membantu orang yang sakit. Saya tidak ingin menjadi petani walaupun nanti itu pekerjaan yang mulia karena Indonesia membutuhkan beras. Saya tidak ingin menjadi petani karena penghasilannya tidak terlalu besar. Nama saya Dian. Pekerjaan orang tua saya pengrajin dan pemangku. Saya, saya ingin menjadi dokter karena saya ingin menyembuhkan orang yang sakit. Saya tidak ingin menjadi petani walaupun itu sangat penting bagi negara saya. Karena petani itu melelahkan dan saya wanita terlalu berat. Sepanjang masih jauh perbedaan salary atau bayaran daripada orang yang bekerja di non pertanian dengan di pertanian itu semakin jauh nanti orang itu akan meninggalkan. Nah, sehingga Indonesia yang dikatakan negara agraris banyak punya sawah, banyak luas sawahnya nanti tidak akan masih ada petaninya. Nah disinilah diharapkan peran daripada pemerintah keperman itu untuk memberikan suatu solusi solution untuk hal itu. Memang sekarang sudah banyak dilakukan lewat jalur pendidikan, diberikan subsidi di universitas bagi orang yang mau studi di pertanian. Nah, oleh karena itu, sinilah bagaimana caranya pemerintah itu untuk memberikan suatu pemikiran, langkah atau memberikan suatu dorongan. Nah, suatu misal dengan membantu atau anak-anak itu diharapkan diberikan dia alat-alat ringan untuk membantu persawahan bekerja di sawah dan juga diberikan insentif nah, sebagai imbalan di luar daripada mereka menjual hasil padinya tapi ada insentif untuk sebagai perangsang mereka itu untuk mau bekerja di sawah that is a problem at the moment you know finding that people that have that connection and have that attachment to the beautiful childhood memory
we have ceremony and we have other activities like wedding and then the people will uh, gather and they will give you uh, eight ducks and few coconut and rice so there was when you want to have a ceremony it doesn't put so much pressure on you in needing money today is crazy it's all about it, just money and you have to have money and then you buy everything which is uh, not not the uh, idea it was designed the sense of uh, competitions of showing off that you're more successful that you are actually now ha has more than others uh, not just a pattern in the uh, materials or financial kind of area also happening in the uh, religious kind of activities in this way the, the religion is being treated as a commodity so that's need to be uh, uh, reawakened again it's it's actually the idea of the offering is is giving back to the land or to the god whatever your land is producing we are believe in bali there is a philosophy about ruah bineda ruah bineda is a uh, two different but they are walking in the same ways, like uh, our hand left and right, night and day. So if we are too left, then we are believe another thing will happen to make in balance coming from the right. There is a God there, there is a devil there. The God never angry, but we make everything angry by the nature, then the nature is the God, actually. <laughs> yeah. For example, I was in, in uh, right after tsunami, I was in Aceh, and I was so shocked in just how big the uh, disaster is. Like, it's, it's impossible. It makes you feel so small because, because then you think there is no God, you know? Like, there is no God. I mean, how could God allow this to happen? Like, but the thing that uh, uh, made me really scared it was the uh, what tsunami brought back to the land is all the garbage that we've been putting into the ocean. It just being slammed onto your face, you know, with all this shit that you're feeding to me, and now you can have it back. I guess uh, for for Balinese, they uh, really uh, whenever there's something happen uh, in nature. And uh, it's always uh, it's a message from God. Then some of the priests believe because of not Agung Mountain, but there is a small mountain close to this village. Kintamani, Batur Mountain, it's active mountain. Some believe of that mountain will destroy us. We need to, to uh, pass a very simple message you know, do Sakala right, then Niskala will be fine. I think it's a bullshit. If you only worry about Niskala world, and you're trying to do all this offering and blah, 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 and whatever, you ask for the prosperity and all the happiness and the health. And while your your daily practices is the opposite, a polluting, so that's nonsense. I mean, I don't believe in that. Uh, because I think uh, going to the temple and, and, and just put your hand up like then saying that you respect God is very easy. Very anybody can do that. But um, but going down and clean the plastic and doing the education uh, to schools and and that's not what you do, which is what need desperately need to be done, you know? Bali faces uh, a lot of issues like the developing country faces, but more prominent in Bali, more complex the fact that the, uh, it also has to deal with 
the shift of the traditional religious kind of aspect of it as well. If you have a place where they don't have such a strong, solid cultural, religious uh, aspect of it, then you may, well, one may have to cope only with the economic kind of progress or technological change. I think the difference there is modern world is it's, it's mostly driven by greed. But in farming world, is we mostly, our ethic is like need. So it's a beautiful connection you create from you and the land and the plants and there's a happiness that I don't think you can find in, in any part or in any dimension of uh, like life.